Hi, good morning. It's uh, really great to see all of you here today. My name is Maloney Bhatt, and I'm a journalist with Economic Times Digital. And I'm very glad to have with me my guest here today, who has been introduced, uh, Mr. Ajay Kumar Sahani. He is the former secretary of uh, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. And, uh, you know, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of the frameworks that you see enabling the app ecosystem, he has his prints on many of them. So, Mr. Sahani, we are very happy to have you here with us uh, today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. All right. You. Uh, so it was in 2015 that, you know, India laid out uh, the Digital India mission. <coughs> and since then, there has been a rapid adoption of digitalization. You know, of course, spurred by COVID, but then fueled by the facilitative framework of uh, government policies, also all the inputs, uh, you know, that were made by entrepreneurs. Uh, the other enabling factor has also been the fact that, you know, there's been, uh, the internet uh, penetration in India has been improving. And there's a data point which actually says that uh, by 2026, India will have a billion smartphone users. From your vantage, uh, what are the opportunities that you see, the big trends that you see emerge that can be seized by the app ecosystem? Thanks, it's a wonderful question. Um, I think from uh, 2015, we have come a very, very long way. So uh, the broadband, first of all, has become available to uh, almost everyone in the country. There are still pockets where people are not able to afford uh, smartphones or they don't have good enough connectivity. I think that's work in progress and it's happening very quickly. The App's economy has uh, really grown, and it has grown on top of uh, a number of uh, uh, foundational uh, efforts that have happened uh, where government has uh, either through policy measures or through very specific uh, uh, pinpointed initiatives uh, created uh, a room and opportunity for uh, uh, for these to prosper. India also unveiled, uh, I was uh, Secretary Electronics and IT from June 2017 to February this year. And during this period, uh, the digital payments uh, took off. Uh, my ministry was responsible for promotion of digital payments. From uh, the something like UPI just sort of took the market by storm. And uh, all this uh, uh, has been uh, happening, uh, large number of uh, consumers, the e-commerce platforms have really taken off. Uh, it's such a, you know, we take it for granted in cities. But you go to Arunachal Pradesh or to Mizoram or to, uh, you know, some of the remote areas and uh, you can sense uh, the delight that people have in being able to order something uh, online and it's actually getting delivered. It takes maybe three days or four days for it to be delivered, but that's... It's, it's still awesome that uh, something in a very competitive way is available to all of them. And uh, all of India is, is a sort of a market to be served. So, you know, we take it for granted because we have uh, shops and we have, we have plenty of choices. But I think this uh, creation of uh, uh, choices and creation of uh, a plethora of services which get offered in a highly competitive manner uh, at uh, affordable uh, rates and uh, tariffs, I think that is uh, truly changing uh, India. Pre-2015, we had uh, a large number of projects uh, that had been implemented uh, both by government of India and by state governments. So it was a period when, uh, you know, letting a thousand flowers bloom. So uh, independent projects were uh, sprouting. 2015 onwards, the idea of uh, convergence, the idea of, uh, you know, 
really taking ourselves seriously when we say we are a billion, dollar, billion person uh, nation. I think that took shape. And joining up with various kinds of technologies became uh, one of the mainstays of our uh, policy efforts. Aadhaar, then uh, UPI, and Arogya Setu, COVID, etc. All these uh, benefit from uh, the idea that we are here to address everyone in the country. And that is where the best gains will come. To my mind, the finest opportunities stem from identifying painful, identifying pain Wherever there is pain in the system, you don't get good health care, you don't get the best of education, you don't get the best of employment opportunities that you are sort of, which, where you might uh, prosper. Wherever you see, you don't get justice. Policing is still, you know, some work in progress. <laughs> you know, there's so much that we desire to, to see in that area. Whichever area you find pain, and it's widespread pain, I think that is the primary opportunity for India. Pain combined with a billion plus addressable market gives us an ecosystem that cannot be rivaled anywhere else in the free world. And that is the opportunity for India. Right. You know, uh, when you spoke of foundational technology, I was reminded of uh, Nandan Nilakani, who's often uh, referred to as the CTO of India. And, you know, he said that India is a leader in building digital transformation at population scale. And he's mentioned uh, some of the, uh, you know, the Aadhaar, the Jandhan Trinity, and uh, of course, uh, uh, UPI, and now of course, you know, ONDC is also there in the fray. Uh, but I wanted to focus on, you know, the Bharat users, because digital India is now transforming into a digital Bharat. And India aims to be this $5 trillion economy. And many levers of that economy could be digital. But as we go ahead and, you know, as we see this huge surge in the swath of Bharat users emerging, what are the challenges that you see there? You know, we, uh, this uh, event basically focuses on um, mobile analytics, market attribution. But uh, when we were uh, going deep into what was happening in uh, digital payments arena, a large number of new apps were coming up on uh, uh, UPI and other than UPI as well. But our lament was that uh, it's the same people, it's the same 5%, then 10% of the population that... Uh, so, so you are not growing the market, you are basically competing for the same pie. So if uh, the same people who have four uh, payment apps on their mobile phone uh, might uh, pick up another couple of apps and drop two of them. Growing the addressable market itself, I think, is extraordinarily important. And we have such an enormous market to grow. Uh, C.K. Prahlad said, uh, you know, long years back, and I was fortunate enough to have heard him in person address us all about 25 years ago in Hyderabad. Fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, that whatever you do for the, those who are at the bottom of the pyramid, you will be forced to do in a highly competitive and highly affordable manner. And if you succeed in a competitive market like India, in taking services which a person in the rural India can afford, you have a winner on your, in your hands. You, after you capture the market which 
wants affordable solutions, the world is out there for us to capture. There's not even a 10x left beyond that. You know, all, all of us talk about uh, uh, the power of, uh, you know, we, we just 10x and 10x and 10x. That's how many of the uh, apps uh, uh, developers are uh, sort of planning their uh, move. Address India, and there isn't a 10x left beyond that. And if you succeed here and provide services which rural Bharat is, is consuming, I think it's uh, easy for us to grow global, uh, leading global services. One thing which I want to mention specifically about digital uh, uh, Bharat rather than digital India is the role that common service centers have played. So around 5 lakh such centers are there today. They are there in uh, more than 99% of the gram panchayats across India, at least one or more. There are about 2.58 lakh gram panchayats and there are around four and a half to five lakh which are effective centers. These have helped us uh, reach out to those who uh, do not have uh, either an instrument uh, that they can use to access services. So more and more service providers are actually coming on to that bandwagon and uh, uh, helping uh, uh, access or provide access to their services through this uh, physical network. So it's, it uh, works beautifully in, uh, in a manner when it's joined up with the uh, online uh, space. So that's a real opportunity for, you know, people in the room to kind of get onto and really service Bharat. You know, it is like uh, you solve for Bharat, you solve for India, and then you build for the world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the government, uh, of course, has played a very facilitative role, you know, in, in setting up the framework for a digital Bharat. Uh, Meti, along with uh, Niti Ayo, you know, also <coughs> had the Atal Innovation Mission. And through it, uh, the Digital India and Atmanir Bhar Bharat App Challenge, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, was for Indian entrepreneurs and for startups. Uh, Indian startups are also finding, and Indian uh, apps are also finding an audience globally. And there was a data point that said that um, in uh, 2021, the time spent by a user outside India on an app made in India was up 150% over 2019. As this ecosystem scales, uh, I want to understand, you know, what are the issues that they need to bring or what are the issues that need to be solved with the user in focus, uh, especially issues around data privacy, data security, <coughs> and not eroding the trust of the user. Around two and a half years back, uh, I think we had uh, looked at uh, the then uh, popular apps and uh, looked at them uh, from the viewpoint of uh, how the data is being handled. Is it being handled in a responsible manner? Are there concerns? And if there are concerns, uh, are they concerns that can be addressed simply by educating all the users, or uh, do we need some uh, policy interventions and specific steps we were aghast to find that a large number of uh, apps were, even those that had a privacy policy. In fact, this was very interesting. If you, they were so confident that people simply go to the end of the, that statement and say, yes, I accept. I accept. That there were some where if you actually clicked and tried to read it, it got pixelized. You can't actually read what is there because it's, it's not there in that kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, it gets pixelated. So it's very difficult to read. So they make it, uh, you know, difficult to read. And then we found that there are a large number of apps coming in from a particular place 
which even if individually each one appears innocuous, if you have a mechanism of joining up what you get, because you take per X permission, Y permission, Z permission here, and you take A permission, B permission, C permission in another app, and if you simply join up the, what you get out of the most, most popular 20 of them, you basically have a, a digital Miloni Bhatt in your server. So you know precisely what is happening because someone can actually join it up uh, behind the scenes. So we did have to take some precipitate steps at that point and uh, someone mentioned that more than 250 apps were actually, you know, we had to clamp down on those. That created enormous uh, room for India. I was told that, uh, you know, more than 40% of uh, the users at that point of time were onto that kind of an ecosystem and uh, I think today it's less than 15%. So I think we have succeeded and we have uh, been able to create the room for uh, Indian apps, Indian uh, service providers to uh, fill up that opportunity space. And by doing that at the right moment in time, I think we have contributed to the growing number of unicorns and the soon to be unicorns, the sunicorns. I think it's a great feeling that uh, normally in uh, Ministry of Electronics and IT, we try not to be a regulator. We try to be a facilitator or a promoter of uh, things. But there are times when um, I think we did uh, assume the avatar of uh, regulating and coming down with a heavy hand, and I'm very happy that we did that. And from your vantage, you've seen that uh you know, that the Indian app ecosystem was able to seize that opportunity, the gaps uh, that sort of came about because of the heavy-handedness, as you mentioned, of the ministry. Actually, we uh, did that alongside uh, a national uh, challenge round uh, for uh, Indian apps across nine categories. We did that twice. And some of those, uh, you know, one of our leading players in maps was just about to go out of Indian hands. And they already, uh, I don't want to mention any names, but already had, uh, you know, the plans were clear and uh, the, the ownership was actually getting uh, sort of, transfer of ownership was uh, just about to happen. And then we had this Indian app challenge. And that app came out the best in in the MAPS ecosystem, and their plans changed. After that, they have sort of, you know, grown to a massive level. So many such apps, the social media apps, many social media apps took shape, and they are still, uh, you know, they've created an Indian uh, flavor, an Indian uh, offering, uniquely Indian. So one thing that might, uh, seriously ignite our own uh, app ecosystem is uh, bridges across languages. The only place uh, that can come even a little close to India's complexity with large number of languages and dialects is Europe. All of Europe uh, still would uh, you know, it would be difficult for them to compete in terms of the diversity and the number of languages and dialects and all that. And right now, an amazing effort is going on to build a, a platform, national platform across languages. It's called Bhashini. Bhashini.gov.in. And within that, the uh, Universal Language Contribution uh, API. I think we should, uh, all app developers must uh, check that out. What this is attempting to do is to create capabilities through a national platform of speech recognition, of translation from English to any of the Indian languages or from any Indian language to other Indian languages, and text-to-speech again. And all that, and all these are independent offerings. ASR, uh, automatic uh, speech uh, recognition in Tamil, might work with a very different, uh, you know, uh, the translation offering might be from someone else, and the TTS offering may be from someone uh, yet 
uh, uh, someone else. All this plus OCR, plus all kinds of other uh, tools are actually taking shape very quietly in bhashini.gov.in, uh, the national uh, digital uh, you know, language mission. This would end up uh, providing us APIs that can actually go into our apps. So an app which today is confined to addressing those who know English and Hindi can not only look forward to being able to serve the pan-India market and people who use their own language or know only their own language, but also those who will use only the audio route rather than the, you know, they, they can speak to their instrument and get all those services. And just imagine the, the, the dream that we have set, the goal that we have set for this has been set by one of my gurus in life, uh, Professor Raj Reddy. He is the only Turing Award winner from India. And that uh, illiterate grandmother in any part of India, say in West Bengal, should be able to have a real-time conversation with an illiterate grandmother or a semi-literate grandmother in, sitting in Kerala, who knows only Malayalam. A real-time conversation. Imagine what that does to unify and to sort of, you know, what it does to what, uh, you know, Sanjay would say is total addressable market or whatever, all of you. Just imagine what it does. Imagine the multiple that you get out of this. That is the next exponential that we can kick off or bring in into our apps ecosystem. Could you quantify or could you point out to more forward-looking policies of the government, you know, uh, that you think will really enable the Indian app ecosystem? The single most important one is, uh, of course, uh, getting the data privacy, uh, data protection uh, legislation in place is very important. Another uh, important effort uh, that still needs to happen um, slightly differently from how it's been happening is to set fiber to every home as a stated goal of the government. We've done that with electricity to every home. We've succeeded with that. We are doing that very successfully with the piped water to every home, even in the rural areas. There is no reason whatsoever why we should not have fiber to every home as our stated goal. Because what fiber does for all of India, for any household, is that it gives you an almost unlimited bandwidth to play with. And as opposed to wireless route, fiber provides uh, enough ample broadband to everyone in the family the man, woman, and child. So fiber to every home, delivering broadband, can actually sort of, it's, it breathes uh, yet another level of energy into the system. But the single most important that policy and the effort that government is, has been making is the national digital, pub, public digital platforms the public goods. We have taken a very different approach from what China has done or what the West has done. India is characterized by this effort to create the national public digital goods. Let me explain what that means. Customer acquisition is one of the most serious costs that everyone is looking at, all of you are one of the things that you are constantly trying to be aware of is what is my customer acquisition? What is the cost of not just acquiring a customer but also converting into a paying customer? You go into large marketplaces, Amazon, Flipkart, Geomart, and various other places in, also in different sectors other than e-commerce because there's huge footfall there. 
Now imagine you have a marketplace which is marketplace of marketplaces, where all the marketplaces are free to compete, where people are looking for, for buying some services or goods, and you are right in the middle of it. So it's the national public digital platform basically means bringing to life this idea that we have a billion users, billion plus users. Making it effective, making it a reality. So that has happened with Aadhaar. Aadhaar doesn't try to make money out of, in fact, we spend money on that. UPI doesn't try to make money from what you do. And it provides you an amazing service which has given a run to, given um, a scare to all the, you know, card networks across the globe. And what happens when you have a digital public good? A company like Google, which could have started its uh, payments uh, journey anywhere on their own terms, opted to do that on UPI. And then has actually recommended that to the policymakers in the US that why don't you have something like this in that geography. So the platform actually brings all of Indian banking, UPI brought all of Indian banking onto one platform. So irrespective of whether you have an account with X bank or Y bank, scheduled or private or regional rural bank or uh, a cooperative bank, from any bank account to any bank account, it becomes uh, possible through a third-party app. So it's a lightweight API-based ecosystem that you have created, and that does the magic because the underlying reality is the Indian banking system. Creating. Now imagine you have an Indian healthcare system. So instead of starting from ground level, you have this elevated platform where all of Indian addressable market is sort of looking for services. And you create a place where everyone can compete. Network effect. Network. It's, it's real, it's implementing the network effect with the, uh, you know, in a, with the determination that uh, everyone in India deserves uh, affordable, competitive services in every domain. Imagine when we do that, what has happened in uh, UPI will next lead to, with account aggregator framework, it will lead to availability of easy credit, competitive credit, because we have the digital footprint today where if I am a small merchant, I make my profile available in a marketplace, saying that this is my, you know, I am giving you conditional access to my bank account and my uh, insurance policies and my, uh, you know, equity holdings and my mutual funds and my digital trail of digital transactions and X, X Y, Z. And now I and my GST. A GST captures everything that you do. Any goods that you have transported in, any goods that you have transported out, week after week after week, and you have paid tax on that. It is not something that you are fudging. The moment a credit provider sees all of that, an algorithm can immediately help, uh, you know, arrive at uh, what is the kind of loan that can be given and at what terms and conditions. And all this can happen instantaneously. So imagine I, I say I need 26 lakh rupees in for so much duration uh, with, and uh, you uh, open that for uh, competitive offerings and instantaneously you will get uh, competitive offerings and you get, we actually learned this from, um, <laughs> the, from the wrong place, the <laughs> Alibaba and uh, the Ant uh, Financial Services and the Zima uh, Financial uh, you know, System, where they said, um, you know, less, less than three minutes to uh, fill up the requirements for a, a loan and uh, instantaneous, after three minutes, you basically have the loan and most competitive terms. So with the account aggregator framework, that is what we are building here. 
But imagine that this also happens in healthcare. How painful healthcare is for all of us. Number one, you know, not knowing what services are available, what professionals are available. Will you dare to ask your doctor whether he actually has a degree or, uh, you know, a specialization or, you know, you go by faith. But imagine that all the medical service providers, all the nurses, all the uh, diagnostic labs, all the blood banks, all the, you know, organ uh, uh, transplant areas, across the healthcare system, all the insurance, pro health insurance providers, that uh, they have a market track record, they have ratings and they have, uh, you know, competitive offerings. And you are able to take services of anyone in a competitive manner. I would say that Indian healthcare system will be the finest in the world. It will be so strong, it will create a model for everyone across the globe. And no one else will be able to compete with what happens in the Indian healthcare system. So, service providers, aggregators, developers, who get on to that bandwagon today, they will be the, among those will be the Facebook of health, the, you know, <laughs> the end, and so on and so forth, who their services and their competitiveness will be almost impossible for anyone else to Till now, we have been looking at million-dollar valuations, billion-dollar valuations. Only very recently, we have, in the last few years, we have encountered trillion-dollar valuations. What is next? And what does India have that no one else has? The opportunity to create Value, companies with valuations of 10 billion, 100 billion, possibly a trillion, that can address real pain areas, not only for India, but for the world, in a competitive, fair, affordable manner. That, I think, is the opportunity which India offers today. And the next few years, we'll see this play out in a almost a magical way. All right. Uh, Mr. Sahani, my last question now to you. We are in a room full of entrepreneurs, you know, a room full of developers. Do you have any words for them to, you know, who are solving for Bharat? Look for pain. Look for uh, anything that, you, that irritates you, whether it is public transport or it is... Uh, uh, you know, facilities available uh, in any or not available in many things. Whatever irritates you, whatever causes you pain, whatever causes pain to any of your family members or friends or a anyone, that is the area to address. And be mindful of the national public digital platforms that are coming in. One of my, uh, you know, anxieties what I'm anxious about is that global giants are able to zero in on these opportunities faster than the Indian app developers. The Indian app developers and service providers must get on to the national public digital platforms and create Indian champions. There's enough uh, room for you, enough policy uh, help for all of you to succeed in India, address Indian problems, and through that, those that resolve the pain in the most efficient and effective manner, I think are bound to be big. So I, uh, I would invest in uh, Indian app developers rather than anywhere else in the world today. This is the place to be in. You are in the right place at the right time with 5G, with IoT, with 
electronics. There's one more point I want to mention. India was weak in electronics, in manufacturing. We are no longer weak in manufacturing. We are growing hugely. The mobile phone exports has more than doubled in one year from April to September last year. And this year, April to September, is more than double of what was there last year. And this doubling is going to take place year on year, year on year for another six to seven years. Doubling, doubling, doubling is not a simple thing. So, and then medical devices have started happening, other areas, you know, things that go into electric vehicles and all of that has started happening. Rockets or, you know, all kinds of things have started happening. So, increasingly, electronics used to be standalone. You buy a device and you use it through, a, through its life cycle and then you discard it. Now the device is as much software as hardware. And where it is updatable software, who has the opportunity? The ones that do software well. And all of a sudden, we didn't, what we didn't have was the hardware devices to go along with our software talent. Now we have the hardware devices. Now the next wave of startups can come from those that combine digital devices with their software capability. All of it Indian, all of it designed and made in India. And that, I think, opens up an enormous new market for everyone. Couple that with the requirements in healthcare, in um, education, in agriculture, in um, drinking water, in sanitation, in pollution control, in name it and you have uh, a massive opportunity. So a large number of uh, unicorns may also actually start coming in when you combine these two areas, both of which, and especially software, is our uh, unique strength. All right, Mr. Sahani, I think you've uh, you know, laid it out for them. The challenge is out there for you to pick up the gauntlet. And uh, thank you so very much for your thank time you. and for your thoughts today. Good morning, sir. My name is Prashant. I'm coming from Coimbatore. So I'm a budding uh, e-commerce developer. So I got two questions. One is related to new telecom bill, where the OTT is also going to be governed. So how it will affect the app makers, uh, e-commerce. The second is that uh, data localization. Earlier in 2020, there was a talk of data localization. So now we are fully dependent on abroad, like US, Google Cloud, or uh, Microsoft for data production for any entrepreneurs. Is there any, uh, anything in mind of government to localize data here so that uh, we will also become a uh, data center kind of a place? Thank you. Uh, you know, when um, an astronaut goes to, into the space, uh, that space suit is a must. If you go into space without uh, that kind of space suit or protection, or if you are uh, taking up a mission to climb Everest, you need uh, the equipment and you need to protect yourself. So, uh, some of the policy measures might look a little uh, difficult to deal with initially, but these must be thought of uh, as being in the nature of, uh, you know, something that protects uh, all of us. So, and there is no reason when, when India votes in one, uh, one direction or says that, yes, we all want data privacy. We don't want our data to be played with in an irresponsible manner. When all of India is, decides and the government basically articulates and makes it happen, everyone in the world will listen. There is no way that they will not comply. And when that happens, why should, uh, you know, the cloud services, the hosting services from India are growing massively over the past three to four years? Why should, uh, you know, any idea of keeping data in India be troublesome? There is no difficulty at all. 
keep large equip large uh, sort of uh, you know capacities in india and serve the world so this is uh, and on data privacy once you are confident that i can go into the apps ecosystem my government's policies not my own behavior itself my government's policies are helping me protect and get a fair deal from everyone it works for all of us i would say go along with what is happening take advantage be the pioneers and be the pioneers in embracing the system rather than you know thinking of some uh, uh, imaginary fears uh, those fears are imaginary if uh, all of us support you know the direction in which uh, this is moving Thank you.